All right. So you need a what now? You need a. Practice. Practice test. Cool. Anybody else need a practice test? One more person. Okay. Good. Um. So let's see. The this test is from the proportion confidence intervals. Remember that wasn't really officially on the last test. So if you want to, well, you can bring the uh, your old formula sheets, but you, you can have all the formulas for the single sample confidence intervals. So this is on the last test. This is the one that was not on the last test. So you know we're going to have one like that. And then you've got your... N formulas. <coughs> Alright, let me stop there. That's basically chapter 7. Then we get into chapter 8, and the only real new new thing in chapter 8 was uh, this z-score here. P is wearing its hat, a little forward for some reason. It's trying to be all cool. And then, and then chapter nine is where we get the monster formulas. Right, we get this dude. Uh, let me just go ahead. Most of the time, it's going to be yes anyway. That guy right here. Pull a little star there if you want to. And then we get this bad boy. Let me do this. So you have p hat is x over n. p hat 2 is x2 over n2. p bar is add everybody back together. No, Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Remember that p bar? It's called the pool decimate. I like that because you can just put everybody in the pool. Okay, all right. <laughs> You're tricking me. No, I don't have a question. I just stretch. All right. Um, and then that all leads into this Z score formula. Formulas from all your other formula sheets. R. You can bring all those in. Say good. R. R. Where are we at? Up there. Here? Yeah. Yeah. Is it N2 or R2? N. Yeah, these are all sample sizes, right? So good percentages we divide by the total number. N. You still can't see through me? What the hell? Oh, that's right. You all running a little in your <laughs> X-ray vision. Need some, what was it, uh, blue kryptonite. It's a good kryptonite, right? Is it? Really Which one that makes them, makes them stronger? Red, Red makes, makes them crazy. Red makes them rage. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's up? What oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you. And then we got the confidence intervals. Um... Might as well just put a T-score there. It's probably going to be a T-score. Uh, what you got, Jeff? And it's the same thing here. So that's the confidence interval for two means, right? If you have two samples. Yes? 
And then, and yeah, and we're about to do it. What's up? No. P What's happening? I mean, P bar times Q bar? Yes. P bar, Q bar, P bar, Q bar. Okay. Say that enough, it sounds weird. And then the confidence interval for this one, P hat 1 minus P hat 2, give or take Z square root of P hat 1, Q hat 1 over N1, P hat 2, Q hat 2 over N2. Whew. And this is not your definitive place for formulas. Double check everything you're writing down. Double check it with the book to make sure that you're reading my writing correctly. Stumpy little camera. Okay. All right. So anything else? Any other suggestions? Bring in everything that was allowed on previous formula sheets along with this new stuff. And on the day of the final, you just bring them all in. Alright. It's an interesting vibe for today. So is, you guys are still copying. Alright. And I, I think the first thing I want to do, since I didn't put this on the answer key, I didn't want to make a third sheet. We could do number six first from the practice test, the uh, hypothesis, I mean the uh, correlation test. And then we'll jump into whatever you guys want to look at after that. Well, I want to publicly apologize to geology. It's not geology's fault. They actually come to find out that's on all the computers. I was in Griffin Gate and it did that to me. I was doing a presentation and it did that little. Mm -hmm. like, oh, it's not geology, it's just in general. All right, so we're going to do number six on the practice test. So if you want to play along, uh, I brought a couple of calculators so if you need to borrow one. actual data. I can't remember. Well, I said it's from the year 2000, so it was before they published the 2010 update. Just real data. A little old data, but real data.
little dude. Chase, are you up? Let's put that up there. Let me know if you have any troubles. Has everybody got all their data in? Is everybody able to get that up on their screen? Just make sure everybody's kind of like with me before I move forward. So this is not good enough to show me on the day of the test. What's missing? <coughs> Line of best fit? Cool. Uh, go stat. 
Jack, Calc, and then number four. Yeah. And then you have to tell it L3, L4. Uh, yeah. Put in there L3, comma L4. Because it defaults to L1, L2. So here, work on the calculator and list, and something goes, like list one does not exist anymore. Just tell me. I'll bring it back. You hit number five, set up editor, that brings it back to normal. Because lists just kind of wander off sometimes. Yeah? So we have to show you how we're calculating. Good. So now, what's my line of best fit here? Why? That's a nice one. Poor little dead. Not dead. Dead yet? 11.40. Oh, it's just. 1140x plus 17,600.5. We'll make this 0.4 be a little more precise. What's up? Sorry. Is that the numbers you guys got? Yes. All right. Because if you didn't, it sounds like those are the right numbers. Because all day long I could have put something in wrong. We're all human. At any point we could enter something in wrong. Uh, but it sounds like if you didn't get those, uh, you entered something wrong. You have to go back and double check. What's your beat? Three. Yeah, so something, you, some data points are not quite right. You might have put 26.8 instead of 28.6 or something like that. Yeah. It's really easy to make that mistake. And I will be lenient with that on the day of the test. I mean, that I'm not going to have you searching through that and not having any time to do the rest of the test. I normally put this problem last so that you don't screw yourself over doing that. Yeah. This calculator is really weird. Like, you put in the right data and then the line is like blank. You sure you put in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Double check your liners. All right, here we go. How do we make that line of us fit in there? That's crazy. 1140.4x plus 17,600.5. Here's some concerns. Let me know if you need help. That's what I want you to go up and show me on the data test. Do I have to show you on Yes, with that picture on it. Okay. Or the appropriate picture for your test. Be very careful if you're considering just taking your friends after they got the mic. Because your test might be different. You want to be careful. Use your mind. So what would you say about the correlation? What kind of correlation is it? Strong, positive. Decently strong, positive, good. A lock X. So would you trust this line and make a prediction? Totally. So then we can do that step C, right? Predict the income for a state where 22 out of 100 hold at least a bachelor's degree. How do I do that? No way. That's insane. So, in this equation, what does x stand for? Bachelor's degrees, right? And y would be the income. Yes, good. So, if I want to know in a state where 22 out of 100 people have a bachelor's degree, I want to know what to expect for the income. I just put a 22 in there. So you can either just put in the calculator like a normal calculator and you can say 1140.4 times 22 plus 17,600 becomes a 6. I'm very excited about this option. And you get that. 
expect the state to have an average income of forty two thousand six hundred eighty nine dollars and thirty cents. Get that thirty cents. Or I can go to my graph and just say second calc value twenty two. $49,789.30, of course, because the calculator has the equation in it. It costs enough money. It should be able to put two and two together. It is a calculator. I don't care which way you do it. I really don't care. As long as you use the equation one way or another to get that prediction. And I trust the prediction because our R was decently strong. I trust it. Yes? So I put in A and B with four decimal places, and I have a slightly different at the end. Is that fine or do you want to Oh, sure, sure, sure. No, no, no. If, if you if you take more decimals out, you're even a little more precise. That's okay. awesome. I can't complain about that. Yeah. Um, how do you choose that as a funding judge? Can I choose no, no, no. I'm going to ask you. Uh, this is part C on uh, on the practice test. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. that's where 22 came from. Yeah, I like that. You don't know how to get 22? No, I have to ask you. Yeah. Yes. What kind of calculator do you have? Oh, that's fine. Well, that shouldn't affect anything. The library calculator is on the back. Now you got it. There's your 11.4. 
just left in the white or something, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be A. Yeah. And then you can put them in the white. On the actual test, you won't know what the answer is supposed to be. So you won't go insane <laughs> trying to figure out why it went wrong. If you're really far off, I'll help you find out what went wrong. But if you're close enough, I'm not going to make you or I go insane trying to find the five that you put in as a four. No, I'm not going to do that to us. As always, what's most important is do you understand the process to go through. This is the one time that I do everything on the calculator. Because then you have to interpret what the hell you see. Now, real quick, does anybody, any mistakes, like look at, uh, what do we get for our prediction? 42,689? Yeah. Who's close to 22 out of 100? Like Louisiana. Is our prediction good? Eh. Louisiana is actually 37,000, right? Mm -hmm. You with me so far? Anybody else close to 22? Michigan's a little bit over 22 and it's 48,000, so average those out and I get that. You kind of with me? So that prediction is coming from the line of best fit, and the line of best fit is a graphical average. So it kind of makes sense that for any specific data point, it would actually average whatever data you have that's close to that. All right. Uh, let me show you something kind of nifty. Uh, how do you get the average of the list one real quick? How would you get the average for list one? How would you find x bar for list one? I get stat. Cal, what variable stats? Yes. So look, the average number out of 100 with a bachelor's degree was 27. With me so far? You with me? So that's the average of the bachelor's degrees out of 100. That, and then the average of the other one, I could do, somebody, somebody write that down. Jeff, write that down. All right. 27.54, that's x bar. What's y bar? We finally have a y. So I could have done two bar stacks. And I had x bar here, and I'll go down a little bit. There's y bar. 49,000. Oh, crap. That's the one that's just about dead. 
sense then that a point that will always be on it is this point, the average x comma the average y. So if I put 27.54 second calc value and put 27.54, it shows up right there in the middle of my line. Of course, it's like the middle of the average of the, the, the line represents. It's awesome. Is the average average. Or the mean mean however you want to talk about it. Does that semi make, how much do you have to understand what I just said? Not, not a lot, but it, it's just something that makes sense. If that line's supposed to be the average, what point should be on the line? The average of x and y should be on the line. It always will be. Always. Kind of kick ass. If you didn't quite get that, you're okay. You're okay. Uh, anything, anything else about that? Yeah. Where did you find y bar? So the quickest way to do, if you know you want averages for both your lists, go to stack out two bar stats. Oh, okay. And then you're going to have to put L3, L4. Okay. And then it, it just calculates all the normal stuff that it normally calculates. It calculates it for both lists. So there's like my standard deviation of my income. Stuff like that. You can get all that stuff at once. Yes, sir. How did you input the uh, for X? Oh, uh, so if you go to your graph, you can ask it anything that's on the screen, anything that lives in between our data. So for this one, I wanted to do 27.54. It was second trace to get into calc oh, okay. value. I want to calculate the value for some input. And the input I want is 27.54. And the output, sure enough, is, well, close to it, 49,007.116. Why is it not exact? Because I rounded this. Yes, second trace value. Or if you don't like that, you just put the number into the equation. Right, that's all. Use your calculator, your normal calculator. And do 1140.4 times this plus this, and it'll get you that. Right? It's just an equation. We know how to handle equations. Yeah? The, the thing I just did? Yeah. It's not referring to any damn question at all. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's just referring to me pointing out an interesting characteristic. <laughs> like teachers do, we're crazy like that. We like to point out. Is that going to be in the test? Don't ask me that question. I hate that question. Is that going to be in the test? The fact that you hate that? All right, so now it's wide open. If there's no other questions on that specifically, you can do whatever you want to do. Yes? All right. Number one, yes. Number one is a freaky, giant, confidence interval. Which equation do I want to use for number one on the practice test? Yeah, the one right in the middle. Kick ass. Not that one. The one right there. Thank you. Number one's all about making a confidence interval. And whenever I ask for a confidence interval, you know you're looking for a formula that has plus or minus in it, right? If I'm not asking you for a confidence interval, don't, don't use those. So for some reason, when I'm in the middle of the hypothesis test and I ask you to calculate Z star, I always have somebody make a confidence interval. Just that, just that, I don't know. You're like, I don't like your question. Uh, I don't get it. All right, so let's see. Um, and this applies to the homework, too. At least one person didn't do a problem because they said they didn't give you standard deviation, but they gave you a list of data like I did in number one. So how do you get the X bar and the S for each of those lists? 
put it one, yeah, L1, L2. You can't do two bar stats because they're not the same length. So you just have to do one bar stats on each list, right? Is everybody kind of with me here? So, so take a minute, and I've got the answers up here. I'll give them to you here in a minute. Try to find the mean and standard deviation for number one for each of those groups. There's two separate groups. <coughs> yeah. So on the test, it's acceptable for us to use the calculator to find that and then just write oh, you standard have to. deviation equals. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure you didn't like. No, you got to. Just like in the homework. Yeah. yeah, just so you remember how to get your own data yourself, your own analysis. Yeah. No, well. Well, he got the first one. All right. Old Stumpy here. That sucks, man. All right. Let's see if I can make you not fall over. Out more than I need it, but somehow I run out. Somebody got stuff for like uh, X bar one. Seven sounds like a good start. Seven point six three. Yeah. What about for S one? Point one or six. six, yes, cool. Why did I pick S, not sigma? This is a sample, yeah. Calculator tells us both. Why? Because it's evil. No, because it doesn't know. We're the humans. Never forget that. We're humans. We created these things. What about N1? 16, crazy. Uh, X bar 2. So these are the people that. I forget which one came first. I've lost all my past. 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 Okay, good. These are the past passers. What's X part two? 5.07, kick ass. S2. One point seven three. One point seven three one. And then N2 is fourteen. Kick ass.
please tell me I said that they were normally distributed. I think I did. Yes. Good. I needed to. Why do I need to say that? Because both of those are less than 30. It sucks. If either one is less than 30 and I don't say it's normally distributed, the two populations, you officially can say, I don't have to do this problem. Na 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 na. <laughs> but you should probably do it because maybe you missed something. Be careful. Um, so this is the ones that failed. Do I use T scores or Z scores? T, why? We're told it's normal and we only have S, not sigma. So what's the degrees of freedom I'm going to use to figure out that T score? Say again, sorry. Nope. I like the I like the the attempt. We're always as conservative as we can be. So which one would lead to the highest T score? 14. So remember it's the smaller of the two. So there is a second option. The book gives that formula. If you want to write that formula down and use it, that's awesome. Little tears will come out. But it doesn't matter. Both ways are accepted. This is just a more conservative way. So if you're more conservative, you can do that all day. So what's the degrees of freedom going to be that I use? 13. Kick ass. And what level of confidence do I want? 98. So can you look up what's the T-score I'm going to use? So alpha is, what's alpha? 0.02, it's always the area in the tail or tails. There's two tails in a confidence interval. So alpha is 0.02. Two tails. <coughs> Degrees of freedom is 13. So say it again. 2.65, kick ass. All right, so make sure you can find that. Yeah. So why did you choose N2 and not one Because N2 is smaller. So in general, uh, we always let the weakest link rule the day. Have any of you guys ever taken any other science classes like uh, chemistry? or Has anybody ever talked about significant figures, significant digits, I think? We call them sig figs in math or sig digs in science. Remember that the weakest link ruled? Whoever had the least sig figs ruled how your answer is going to be. So it's, it, that happens, and the rest of you guys are like, what the hell is he talking about? But in general, math or any science, you want to communicate how uncertain you are, so the weakest link rules. What's the weakest link between these two? This one, because it's a smaller sample. So that's what I'm going to use to figure out my degrees of freedom. I'm going to communicate to people that I don't know what the hell's going on. I only talked to 14 people, leave me alone. All right, maybe, maybe. So that covers our ass for that fact, making this score bigger than the Z score would have been. All right, so do we have everything we need? Hell yeah, we got T, we got the X bars, we got the S's and the N's, we're ready to go. We just got to plug and chuck. So now I got my 7.63 minus 5.07. Give or take, 2.65, square root. You forget those squares. People do that. It throws the whole thing to shit. Be careful. Let's get in here. I get this is 2.56. Mm -hmm. What do you guys get for the error? 
And then you just do that. Right. So the little interval I get. What the hell does that mean? From what we've seen, could the two means be the same? Does it? Is there evidence that the two means could actually be the same for the whole populations, both populations? Yeah. What we've done, does it show evidence that the two means could be equal? Why not? What does this not have in it? Zero. Because this is a confidence interval for the difference. So it's this is saying the difference is at least 1.12. So that would be the least amount of difference I'd expect between two populations of failers and passers for a class as far as how much they study, which kind of makes sense. So we have to understand. Yes, so now you'd say we are. 98% confident that 1.12 hours. Well, let me do this. I've already written it once. I'm just going to give you guys the answer key. I'm like, this feels familiar. So a confidence interval is not normally good enough to test a claim, but a confidence interval does give me an idea of where things could be, and this shows no evidence that it could contain zero difference. Okay. So this is actually evidence that the two population means are actually different. Yeah. Okay. They could, this doesn't say that they could be the same because it doesn't have zero. This is a measure of how different they are. So this is trying to say that it seemed to be at least this different and at most that different. Okay. And there's no way they could have zero difference because zero is not in there. So if there was zero difference, that would mean that... Beautiful. So I think on number 5A, there's a negative percentage up to a positive, so there could be zero percent difference on 5A. Do you see on number 5? I was running out of room. I can get you one, yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Yes. 
There's no way to find that on your own. Oh, I mean, technically, I could just give you alpha and say construct a confidence uh, interval using <coughs> alpha, but that's just never done. Okay. You, you say you don't use alpha when you talk about the confidence. You talk about 98% confidence interval. Yeah. When they ask you to do a 98% confidence, then you can figure out alpha would be 0.02, so then you can look at the right place on the chart. But it would just be weird to say, use alpha 0.08 to create a confidence. No, it just sounds weird. We just, you know, just don't say it. Yeah. You could, but I won't. Yeah. Yeah. Zero would have to be in here. So it'd have to be like negative something up to something, yeah. Yeah. And again, this does not mean that there's no way they're the same. We know that by now, right? Because we're only 98% confident about this interval. Right? But do you understand that the further this is away from zero, that is certainly kind of stronger evidence. An hypothesis test. That would be related to our Z star. Z star tells me how far away I got. That's why a hypothesis test is much better for testing a claim. It really, really gives me an idea of, well, how far away did we get? This one doesn't really give that, but that's sort of like what that would mean. That's the equivalent for a hypothesis test. Yes, ma'am. Can you do three things? Can you do three things? Oh, shit. I have nothing to look at. Can I look at one of yours? Oh, the, the, yeah. Question. Oh, uh, yeah, number three, I changed the numbers, and I actually, before I had it so that it would actually make a difference, have you realized that, for example, um, so is your question about the conclusion, or is your question about the second part of that question? The how would it be different? Oh, D, okay. Um, all right, so 3D, right? 3D, okay. Uh, so 3D is just where we make our Z star, right? Uh, So I'm not sure which part, can you tell me which part was there trouble with? Just honestly finding P, I don't know why. Oh, finding P, thank you. Okay. So I don't know why I got so confused by All right, finding P. So you're cool with Z star. I mean, 3D, I had no way of saying this until I figured out. So your problems with P, because 3D is just so freaking set in stone. It's very difficult to have a problem with it. You just throw things into the equation and get the number. The weird part might be the P that. <coughs> so we should all be cool with that Z star coming out in 3D. And how many tail tests was this? One. One tail test, good. So I don't have to double anything from my p values. So my z score, my z star is negative 3.05. So this is all the p value is. The p value is always the area in the tail or tails for your z score. That's all it is. So can somebody tell me what that area is? Zero, zero, one, one. If you look at the z score chart, look at negative 3.05. And why, why am I able to look at the z score chart to find this guy's p value? Because on number three, I'm allowed to use z scores. I like it. Because number three was a weird situation where I actually knew the standard deviation of the population, right? Okay, good. I like it. Some of you guys are like, just, just nod your head for this poor guy. <laughs> He's looking around for verification. Yes? Sure, man. Whatever you just said. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, but seriously, does that if this is a two-tail test, what would I do with that 0.001 one that I found? Double it. 
So then the p value would be 0 0.0022. But this is a one tail test, so the p value is this. So can somebody tell me, alpha for this problem was what again? To begin with? 0 0.05, right? Yeah. All right. So can somebody tell me between these two, the check to see whether we reject or fail to reject? How would you check these? Yeah. So since my p value is less than alpha, then we can reject the null. So if I would have worded part E a little bit differently, if part E would have said, the second part of part E would have said, how is it different if alpha was 0 0.001, if alpha was 0 0.001 instead of 0 0.05, if alpha would have been 0 0.001, the level of evidence was really high, that's a very significant test, that's why it's called the level of significance, bless you, that's really damn far away. Did I make it far enough away? Is my key value less than alpha? No, in that case, if alpha would have been that, I would have failed. I would have failed to reject the null. I would have failed to support the high. That's the point of my question there. So I used to have a problem that did that, and then I changed the numbers and I forgot. Yeah? Is it always that the key value is less than alpha? Always. always. It's the exact same as looking at Here's my critical score, and we got past it. If that's true, then the p-value will be less than alpha. But, I mean, is it always reject the null? Totally. Well, again, what do you do if you get inside the rejection region? Reject the null. So if you, if you do, this is my z star here, right? Now, stay with me now. If you do get in here, which tail is bigger? The tail of that dude or, the, or my tail? Tail of that dude, right? So if I do get inside here, then that dude's tail will be bigger than mine. So these are equivalent ways of looking at it. This one makes more physical sense because my sample, I could just see. That's how far away it got, and it had to get that far away. So that's immediately obvious how that test works. This one is the reverse of what you might think, but it's because if I get far away, I've got a little tiny tail, right? Don't judge me in my little tiny tail. So, and sure enough, in this case, that bad boy is way smaller than him. But if that was my alpha, then 0 0.0011 is bigger than 0 0.01, we would fail. Just barely. Just barely. I meant like, you said reject the null no. Yes, so whatever the results would be for this, it it's the same. Or? No, 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 no. What do you always do if you get to the rejection region? You reject the no. null. Support the high. Uh. You can say that immediately. If you get to the rejection region, you can say that. Then you say which one was my claim. Yes, ma'am. Beautiful. And that's why I wrote it up here. If I would have said. No, you put on the practice test that if we had used 0 0.01. I know, I know. Oh. If I would have said this instead on there, right? If the question I put down there would have been this. Oh, okay. Thank you. Because the way it is right now, you see in the practice test, I say on the answer key, uh, they ain't damn difference, right? Oh, okay. Because it's still powerful enough to kill 0 0.01. If I would have said 0 0.001, no. There would have actually been a difference. We would have failed to reject it, though. We would have failed to support the high. <clears throat> so this tells you how important the choice of alpha is. That's my point. So like the fire insurance company problem, they would set their alpha to be pretty high, or you know, a high level significance, so a, a low alpha, 0.001 or something, because they want a lot of evidence before they lower your your insurance your premium, right? <coughs> kind of with me. Whereas if you work in a nuclear reactor and you have something that kind of measures how off the parameters are you want to set your your alpha to be pretty big to be like 0.1 so that you don't wait so if you're if you have something some machine that measures well here's normal i want the machine to start beeping if it gets over there i don't want this to be small right i'd much rather go running to the back and everything's okay than sitting up there yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying, boom and it blows up 
and uh, because the giant monsters come and absorb the radiation stuff. I gotta rewatch that movie just to get it on the system. <laughs> so alpha, the choice of alpha depends on how critical it would be to make that kind of mistake, right? So for you guys, I'm always gonna give you what alpha is. In the real world, when you get into whatever field you're getting into, you would have your own personal alpha. Sorry. <laughs> I was listening to my 80s station earlier, so. The song came on. No? Don't like that song? All right. All right. <laughs> you guys are funny. What's, what's the formula used in greedy? I'm trying to look at my formula so, uh, the formula sheet we created today does not contain that formula because that's an old formula. That's from a million years ago. Uh, that's your, your data minus the mean divided by the new standard deviation. That, that we've known that forever. Yeah. So, it's going to be on one of your old formula sheets. Is it still Z star? I think that's what turned me off. Sure. That's what we call it now. That's what I call it now. But it's still the same formula, right? Yeah. In fact, T star. It's the exact same freaking formula, just with an S on the bottom, right? So the formula never, ever changes. I don't know if you guys believe me. I don't care if you guys believe me, to be honest. But if you understand what I mean with that statement, that means you're that much, you understand stats just a little bit better. Because, I mean, we just had a formula up here that was, uh, you know, like, like this one. And you're like, well, Jeff, that's nothing like that one. Sure it is. My data minus the middle divided by the standard deviation. It's always that. The z-score is always that. Always. I just have to use the right things for that situation. How much do you care? Not really much because you've got your formula sheet. You can always look at that. if you want to do any specific problems or it's just totally up to you guys. What? If you ask me questions, shit. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> what about number five? Number four. Wait, wait, wait. I got a question right here. Could we do number five? Could we do number five? Sure. Okay, and then we'll do number four. Say again? I did. I did, Jeremy. Uh, but since there's no questions, I can certainly do some. Um, so five. Let's expand on five a bit because I was running out of room. What's that really first little thing that I'm trying to say there real quick? Can you guys interpret that? I mean, if on five, if I want to construct a confidence interval for percentages, what do I need to check to make sure I can do that? Yeah, N1, P1 hat, N2, P2 hat, N1, Q1 hat, N2, Q2 hat. Holy shit, shit, shit. Is this the one, the problem where I'm talking to the... 50 some odd people and stuff like that, right? I don't have a practice test anymore, so. Is this that one? Let's see. 84 students. Yeah, 84 and 51. Good. 63. Yeah. Who do what? 84 and 63 say yes, and 51 and 34 say yes. Oh, thank you. I don't have any more blank practice tests. They are gone. So somebody took two. That's all right. Um, five. Here we go. Yeah. So can somebody tell me real quick? All of these should be very quick to get. You shouldn't have to do much work at all. What's N1, P1, hat? 63. Where did that come from? So the first 
group I see, I'm going to call them sample one from population one, right? So my first sample I see are the students. So students are number one. Yeah. All right. Live on that for a little while. Let's see. Uh, so I don't have to do any work. I desperately want you. If you do work, okay, great. It'll still come out to the same number. Because how do I calculate P hat one? What would P hat one be? 63 divided by 84. So what's 84 times p hat 1? 63. That's what that is, right? So that's 63. What's, uh, well, let's do, N, let's do uh, the students totally. What's n1q hat 1? What's the rest? 130. For students, so the failures. Yeah, 21, the rest. So together, these have to make 84. What's n2 p hat 2? The successes from the teachers? 34. And what's N2 Q hat 2? Who do I? 17. 17, thank you. All right. Do you guys see that? I mean, if not, okay, you can calculate P hat, and then you're based, when you multiply this, you basically undo the calculation you just did if you want to. Sure. I don't know why you want to. Uh, so, what is P hat 1? So Q hat 1 is amazingly enough, you know what it is, you don't have to do any work. 0.20, it's got to be 0.25. You can do the work and show yourself that it is, but you know it's that. Uh, P hat 2. Careful. Remember with the P hats and Q hats, you have to go at least three places. And so Q hat 2 would be point. Three, three, three. So right there, what does that mean by itself? What does that mean? That means a decimal with a seven and a five. So what's that mean? Seventy-five percent of students said yes. Said yes. That the semester should be shortened, right? Sixteen weeks. Holy shit. I kind of agree with this. I would put myself in, in this category. Um, and 25% say no, it shouldn't be shortened. Uh, two thirds of the professors said it should be shortened, one third said it should not be shortened, so forth. Okay, cool. So it's good to know the physical reality of the numbers you just calculated. That's the whole point of stats. Math can have numbers and they don't mean shit. Stats, the numbers have to mean something, they, they come from real life stuff. All right, cool. Oh, no. So now uh, we're trying, on A, we're making the confidence interval, right? So we got everything we need except for the Z score. And then why do I know I can use the Z score? Because all these were at least five. Yeah. So it's normal enough. Cool. If it wasn't normal enough, I officially could not do anything. I like it. Cool. So what Z-score will I use for, uh, what was it, 98%? Mm -hmm. What Z-score do I use for 98% confidence interval? Beautiful. So you could use 2.326. If you put 2.33, that's fine too. That's like using the Z-score chart for it. This is what comes from the T-score chart. Either way. Uh, and now we got everything we need, right? The formula for this is p hat 1 minus p hat 2, give or take, z square root p hat 1 q hat 1 over n1 plus p hat 2 q hat 2 over n2. Trust me, the only reason I know all these formulas is because I understand the idea behind them. I don't memorize every formula, to be honest. I kind of create it as I go, because I know the idea about it. That's nice, Jeff, showing off. No. People that do really bad at math, a lot of them think they're supposed to memorize everything. Holy shit. That would be insane. There's so much shit in math. If you have to memorize everything, there's no freaking way. At this level, you guys, some of you guys at least should have realized that. There's no way to memorize everything. 
And that's when students feel really frustrated and like math is impossible. It's because they think that. And thank God it's not true at all. All right, now you just got to plug and chuck. Is that cool? I mean, this should be the relatively easy step, and you can see what I did on the answer key. Uh, what I left off there was I started, so do the work, and I got down to negative 0.106 up to 0.272. Do you guys get the same thing? Or has anybody done that yet? You never know. I was doing this kind of quick. So easy to put something in your calculator wrong. Some of you guys know how to do like two sample t tests in your calculator. Uh, the reason that I don't even use it at all is because it's completely not beneficial to just push buttons and have numbers come popping out. The only thing I do that for is for correlation because the equation is so daunting that route's not really beneficial. That's more beneficial just to have the technology give me the numbers and I can go from there. Yeah. I'm kind of lost on how you got that score. Oh, uh, so what's the confidence level for that problem? Uh, 98%. So if you use the T-score chart, and I can use it because I just go to the bottom for the Z-scores. Uh, every confidence interval is how many tails? Every confidence interval makes how many tails? Two. So it's a two tail. <coughs> Alpha is how much is outside? Yep, yeah, 0.02. So look at two tail, 0.02 all the way to the bottom. 2.326. Kick ass. You, use the you totally could. And then you get 233. So if you use the Z score, you have to be careful. You don't look up 0.98, because that would be this is 0.98. No, 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 no. I want this to be 0.98, which means this is. Careful. 0.02 together, so this by itself is. You want to look at 0.01. The, for, the chart says when you look up an a, a area, it's going to be below that z-score you find. That's not what a confidence interval is. It's the middle part that it cuts off, so that's never going to give the right value if you do it that way. Is that good enough there, you guys? And of course, now, it, it, now don't do as I do here. That's not good enough, right? I know I put that on the answer key, but I'm just reminding you that you do need to write a conclusion. So don't do that and say, well, you did it. Not screw that. We are what? We are farmers. We are 98% confident at the interval. And now you make this into more better form, like my, my grammatical abilities. 10.6% to... Bless you. 27.2% contains percent difference between students and teachers' opinion on length of this conclusion. Oh, sorry, of this semester. Normally, I'm semi-lenient, considering my inability to make it all the way to the end of that. As, as long as you give me some idea of the physical reality, don't just say we reject H naught. No, you tell me the claim. Don't just say we're 90 percent confident that this interval is the answer. What? No. Tell me the physical reality, the percent difference between students and teachers' opinions. That would be enough. That's fine. But give me something more than just this contains a true percentage. Of what? Of what? Big songs that like beats. What? Is that a good banding? Big songs that like. Just scratch that one. Yeah. Where's the beat 
little bit of hitch on it. All right, so there was a request about 5B now, right? Yeah, 5B, somehow I managed to get a whole test to fit in there. So we got a lot of work that we need for that. So let's see. So have you guys got this? Well, you guys got it on the answer. So uh, you got the conclusion? OK. So now 5B is using that same data. I want to test the claim. What's the claim? That they're the same. Bless you. So which one is that? Beautiful. Why am I not putting hats on these things? It's not formal. It's got beautiful heads of hair. I don't want to cover that. It's not formal. They look bald, actually, so I don't know why they should wear hats. Because hypotheses always refer to the population, always. There are claims about a population. I don't make a claim about samples. I mean, if I made a claim about the samples, that wouldn't make anything I can see. I don't have to make a claim that that's less than that. It is less than that. I make a claim about the population. That's the thing I don't know anything about, except for what I see here in my samples, right? So only, and what's going to be H1? Yeah, the opposite of E. It's crazy. So how many tail tests? Two tail tests. Yes. So that's the first step. What's the second step? Yeah, Z or T or nothing. Right. So thankfully, that check is here already. You can just reference, I did it already. That check tells me it's normal enough. You can just piggyback. So I like doing these two-part problems because a lot of the work you do here, you just carry it over there. So check, normal enough. Become a U. There it is. That's already done, right? Step three now is rejection region, right? To find the rejection region. We know it's going to be a two tailed monster. Uh, I can use Z scores. And I want to use alpha of 0.02. Is that right? It should be because I want to make it the same as the composite one. Why? What's not P hat? I don't understand. Yeah, I was talking about these. The claims we make, I'm not going to make a claim about something everybody knows. So that would be really stupid if we say, my claim is that that is bigger than that. Good job, Jeff. Way to go out on the limb. But my claim is always about populations. I use samples to show evidence for or against those claims, but my claims are always about I'm sorry, what did I just say? My claims are always about populations, and I use samples to test that. So this is a statement about my claim and its opposite. So what's always going to show up in there are population symbols, because I'm talking about claims of populations. So I have two different populations, teachers and students. And my claim is that those two population proportions are the same. If my claim was that the sample proportions are the same, that would be an awesomely small test you go, no, and then, and then move on. Does, does that make sense? So the, the, my claim can never be about the sample because I could just, right here, I'm done. There's no, I don't have to do through the five, there's no point. I can see my sample. I don't have to make a claim about something I can see. Can I see the population? No, it's too large. I don't want to look at that. All right, maybe, maybe, yes. H-O is the null and is that he have that equal sign, right? Yes. Cool. So this one's got the, the opposite. 
All right, so Z-scores, uh, output's 0.02. It's a two-tailed test, so we already know what the Z-score is. Because we already looked it up for that problem. 2.326, yeah. Or 2.33 if you use the Z-score chart. And what does that define? What I just wrote up there, what does that define? Rejection region, which means what? Say it in, in, in more layman's terms. All right, all right, all right. But this kind of defines. Cool. I like it. So that, yeah, that's how you say this in in, uh, in words. So if z star is less than negative two point three two six, or greater than two point three two six, what do we do? Reject the null. Support the high. So what I'm trying to say is, this just tells me how far enough away is far enough away. How far away is far enough away for evidence that the null is wrong. So this defines how far away my sample has to get. And then the next step is going to be how far away did my sample get. I desperately want that to make sense. These hypothesis tests feel a little long, I understand. But the most important points are three and four. What's far enough away and how far away did you get? You want this job, you better type 120 words a minute. Holy shit. Did you do it? No, I'm not a robot. Leave me alone. It sounds a lot to me. Is that a lot? 120 words a minute, that's a lot. That's like, hello. All right, some of you guys can do that. Of course, your words are like missing some letters, but that's all right. <laughs> it's more efficient. I can't argue with that. Uh, or just pictures, emojis, little Egyptian hieroglyphs. Um, so now we've defined what far enough away is. Now I look at my, my I got all my sample stuff here, right? What's the thing I got to create though for this formula? What do I have to create? Yeah, I got P. I'm talking about P. I got P hat. I need P bar, right? All right. So how do I make P bar? So to make P hat, P hat to make them, I had to. Uh, I should have written this down. It was 34 to 51. Is that right? I broke them apart, so now I want to put everybody together. Let me put all the successes together. So how many total successes were there? 97. 97. How many total people were there? 135, right? So that'd be 97 out of 135. So again, P bar is X1 plus X2 over N1 plus N2. Don't break people up. Bring us back together. Can't we all just get along? All right. Don't beat each other up. Help each other loot the stores. And what's, uh, so what's that? P bar? <laughs> that would be a really strange scene. They're looting, but they're helping each other. I'm not sure how to feel about like that. It's good and bad. Sorry, I'm making light of recent events, which is what you have to do. 0.719. 0.719. And of course, you guys got the answer, so what's that? Point two. Eight one. So then the Z score formula, Z star is huge because I had to make room for everything. So it's P hat one. Where'd it go? 0.75 minus P hat two divided by square root P bar Q bar. Over N1 plus P bar Q bar over N2. Woo. So again, it's the same exact formula, just everything's been doubled to make room for two samples. Right? You just realize that. You feel less like, oh, I'm just putting numbers in and getting numbers out. Right? Which is what you feel like very often in math. I understand that. So let's see if I got this right. I got 1.04. I did that really fast. So I'm hoping it came out right. The biggest mistake is people mess up the parentheses, right? So I think you should get 1.04. So what's that tell me? 
Say again? Failed to reject 11. You didn't make it far enough away. We only got about that far away. So that could totally happen randomly. It's not good enough evidence that there is a difference. I like it. Failed to reject. And what is my claim anyway? Which one's my claim? They're the same. And which one's my claim? That they're equal. So my claim is a null, so I want to use that language. We have not found sufficient evidence to reject the claim. Some of us still are not quite seeing that. I desperately want you to see there's no vagueness. There's no roll a die and see where it is and pick that word. It's not. You just, what's my claim? My claim is HO. So what language I'll use? The language that goes with HO. If my claim would have been H1, I would have said fail to support. That's the language I would use. There's no guessing. There's none of that. I desperately want you guys to see that. Yes? Are you guys cool with that? So your, your conclusion, we have not found sufficient evidence to support the claim that the percentage of students and teachers are the same, right? That would be the conclusion. 4B? What happened? For the quiz. Oh, 4B on the quiz? No, no. The 4B right now is... So the one on the quiz, the first problem on the quiz, the last sentence said it is known that this distribution is normal. There you go. So if you don't know it's normal, what's what's the sample size got to be? Greater than 30. If you know it's normal, what's the sample size got to be? Any that you want, because it's already normal. So on that on the quiz, I told you it was normal. So you didn't need n to be greater than thirty. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you you have to know it's normal. So either I tell you it's normal, and then it doesn't matter what n is, or I don't say anything about if it's normal. So you need n to be greater than thirty. So on the quiz, I told you it was normal. So it doesn't matter what n is. Doesn't matter. So that's what I mean by if you think, man, I shouldn't have to do this because it's not normal, do it. Because you probably, I'm not going to make that kind of problem. I want you to understand. I would be so evil to make a problem where if you're lucky enough to realize you don't have to do it, you save time and you got more time for the rest of the test. That, that's so evil. I've had teachers that have done that to me and I didn't notice one little thing and screw them. I'm still upset about it. So I'm not going to do that to you. Give me 10 more years, and me distance myself from that, and then I'll be screwing all my students over. So just be happy you're in this decade. <laughs> I don't know. I want to see me in 10 years. Screw these kids. <laughs> this is an impossible problem. I've had teachers give us problems. They're like, what, what are we supposed to do with number three? Oh, I just gave you that just to see what you would do. Seriously, that's what they said. I just gave you that to see what you would do. What? I, I don't know what to do. Holy shit. Well, you found an answer? Good. Make money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to write a paper. 